Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. May the abundant grace and glory of God when we celebrate the liturgy of the 15th Sunday in ordinary time overshadow each and every one of you. During the 1995 Christmas season, a flat tire forced the driver of a slick uh, limousine to pull onto the shoulder of a busy New Jersey highway. The sufferer stood by the stranded car, hoping someone would see their plight and stop to help. At last, a passing motorist offered assistance. Upon completing the dirty job of changing the tire, the Good Samaritan was thanked profusely by the sufferer. Then, a dark window rolled down in the limo, and the occupant asked what he could do to repay the favor. Well, just send my wife a big bouquet of flowers. And with this cultural command, this volunteer handed the passenger a card with his wife's name and their address. Two weeks later, a gorgeous bouquet of orchids arrived at the designated address with a card signed by a famous billionaire and his wife that read simply, we pay off your home mortgage. We are happy with the story ending, but today's parable might not describe a situation of worthy of repayment. The Good Samaritan puts himself out. He goes out of his way to save a hot death traveler, someone he doesn't know, and someone who belongs to a social group that despises his own social group. First of all, this meant taking a risk. Playing dead was a popular trick of Palestinians experienced roadside thieves and bandits. They would pretend to be injured, and when a kind traveler stood down to help, the gang of thieves would pop out of hiding and attack. Second, this attention was costly. The Good Samaritan had to use up his own oil and wine to treat the wounds. He had to leave money with the innkeeper to cover expenses. Further, it was inconvenient. The Samaritan was on the road for business, maybe very important business stopping at the scene of the accident and taking the injured man to safety would delay his trip. In short, the whole thing was really a bad investment. Maybe by telling this parable, Jesus would like his listeners, us, to see the self-portrait of Christ and what he has done for us, for the human family as a whole, and for each of us individually. Christ is our good Samaritan. Only Christ's help can get us back on our feet, keep us there, and infuse in us the inner spiritual strength. In a culture full of self-indulgence, 
self-reliance and extreme individualism, we need to be reminded of this truth. So during this Mass, let's thank our Lord for coming to save us, for not walking by like the priest and the Levite, but stopping beside us, going out of his way for us. And when he does it again, this evening, by coming to stand with us in the Holy Communion, let's promise him that we will not just thank him with our words, but also with our actions. Every Christian is called to be another Christ. Christ wants to reach out to the people in our circles of friends and family, just as the Good Samaritan reached out to the unfortunate man who had been robbed and beaten. And he wants to reach out through us. Each of us knows people who have been robbed and beaten up by the troubles of life in this fallen world. This week, encouraged by the example Christ gave us in this parable, and nourished with his very own supernatural strength through the Eucharist that we will receive, let's allow Christ to reach out to that person through us. By inviting us to be his good Samaritan co-workers, Jesus gives us an opportunity to show him how grateful we really are. This week, let's make sure the opportunity doesn't slip by unnoticed. Let's obey Christ's command to go and do likewise, to do our part to save the world around us. If we do, the Lord promises we become truly live.